This video will discuss the velocity selector to select uh, electrons that have one particular velocity out of a beam of electrons that has many, have many different velocities for the separate electrons, and also show how we can determine the charge to mass ratio for an electron. Uh, so we start with a horizontal beam of electrons. It's moving in a vacuum. We want to ignore any collisions with air. And there are two conducting plates that the electron beam is moving through. Uh, the upper plate is at 260 volts. The lower plate is at zero volts. There's a magnetic field in the region of the plates of 0 0.0029 teslas, and it's directed downward. And the plates are separated by 0.7 centimeters. So there's our velocity selector apparatus. Then the electrons will exit this region into a region where there's only magnetic field. So there won't be uh, any electric field not moving between charged plates. The uh, Also a gravitational field, but we're going to ignore that. And we'll show a calculation at the end of why we can ignore that. Uh, moving in this region with just magnetic field, it'll the electrons are going to go through half of a circle and they impact a scale, uh, a target that's 5.02 centimeters away from the location where they left the conducting plates. Um, we want to calculate the charge to mass ratio and along the way we're going to calculate the velocity coming out of the velocity selector. So let's take a look at a, a diagram here <clears throat> on the left. So the, the plates, the beam of electrons traveling through there, the circle with the X indicates a magnetic field that's going down into the paper. So the zero, the circle with the X, that's magnetic field uh, directed into the paper. So we have uh, electric field that's upward, the 260 volts, that's a positive 260. The electrons are going to be de attracted upward and they're going to experience a magnetic force downward. And for the magnetic force, if you recall, the magnetic force is, um, I'm going to write it here, it's a vector calculation where the vector force is Q, V, cross B. And we have to use a right hand rule to determine the direction of the force. We first extend the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the velocity. That's going to be off to the right. Then we rotate the wrist of the right hand so we can easily bend our fingers down. So my hands are coming across here and my fingers bending down. And then my thumb shows the direction of the force on a positive particle. Because it's an electron, Q is a negative number, and the magnetic force is down. So we have two competing forces in this velocity selector. There's an upward uh, electrical force, there's a down, uh, sorry, upward on the paper, electrical force, downward on the paper, magnetic force. They're in opposite directions. Um, so how is this going to play out? Well, the velocity selector, there will be one velocity for which the magnitude of the electric force equals the magnitude of the magnetic force. Those electrons will go through in a straight line. The other electrons, if they're traveling slower, the electrical force will dominate and they'll head towards this positive plate. If the velocity is greater, then the magnetic force dominates and they head towards this zero voltage plate. So that's uh, one consideration. To simplify this, the Q's are the same on both sides, so it's just the electric field value equals the velocity times the magnetic field value, or the velocity is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. We're going to need the number for that velocity, so uh, we can work on that by first finding the electric field. The electric field is the voltage difference between locations divided by the distance between those locations. So we have 260 volts divided by 0 0.007 meters, the plates were separated by 7 centimeters, but we need to convert that to meters. So I find 37,143 volts per meter. And I don't round off intermediate results. I'll wait till the end to do some rounding. So we have that uh, consideration. So what else can we learn about this now? We can learn the velocity of the electrons that go straight through. We have the value of the magnetic field already. 
The velocity is electric field divided by magnetic field. We now know the electric field, so we go ahead and divide those numbers, 37,143 divided by 0 0.0029. I need to slide that up for you. And we find that the velocity is 1.28, roughly, times 10 to the seventh meters per second. Is that possible? The answer is yes. What we would compare to would be speed of light. 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second is our speed of light. So we're safe here. This is not a relativistic uh, problem. And it's not uh, exceeding the speed of light especially. Now, in the region with only the magnetic field, the magnetic field is what creates this centripetal force that turns this uh, uh, electron in the path of a circle. We already know from our discussion earlier, the right-hand rule tells us the magnetic force is down on the paper. So we're going to be, at first, feeling this downward force. But as the velocity changes direction, the magnetic force also changes direction. And the magnetic force is always directed towards the center of this circle. If I put a few more magnetic force arrows on here, as the electron moves uh, in that path, the force is always directed towards the center. That magnetic force is a centripetal force. Well, moving in circular motion, we know that we can set up uh, the magnetic force. Here's our description for the centripetal force, mass times speed squared divided by r. <clears throat> and we don't need direction anymore. We have the magnitude of the uh, magnetic force. This force is constant all the way around this semicircle. Uh, the Q is the same, the speed is the same all the way around the circle, and the magnetic field has the same value. As this particle, as the electron goes on this path, its velocity is a constant. The force is perpendicular to the path, so the force is not doing any work on the electron. The force is perpendicular at each point to the displacement, so the work is zero, the velocity is a constant, um, and therefore the speed is a constant. We can simplify this and solve for charge divided by mass, Q over M. So I'm dividing both sides by the mass. I'm dividing both sides by VB. One factor of the velocity cancels, and we end up with B in the denominator. So the charge over mass number is can be found by the velocity divided by the radius of the circle divided by the magnetic field strength. We were given that the uh, diameter was 5.02 centimeters. So I've converted that to meters and now we divide by two to find the radius of the circle. This R stands for radius. We were given the diameter specifying how far the distance was to the impact point. So we have the R value. We already knew the magnetic field value and we knew the velocity number from earlier work. So let's go ahead and uh, put in those numbers. And I find the charge to mass ratio and do this calculation on your own. Pause the video and uh, fire up your own calculator. And I get 1.76 times 10 to the 11th coulombs per kilogram, charge to mass. Now I mentioned earlier that the uh, I could discount, ignore the gravitational effects here. I knew that from experience, but uh, just for confirmation of that, the force of gravity on the electron multiplying the mass of the electron by 9.8 uh, meters per second squared uh, is 9 times 10 to the minus 30 newtons. The acceleration, we already knew the acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. We're dealing with gravity at the Earth. What about the time to move around the half circle? Well, 2 pi r divided by the time would be the speed. So I've simplified here. We're doing just half the circle, so the distance is pi times r. And dividing by the speed will give us the number of seconds for the electron to move around half the circle. And it's not long, 6.2, 10 to the minus 9 seconds. If we use the kinematic equation then, uh, the acceleration is constant. Gravity, we're talking about the downward acceleration due to gravity on the electron. So the distance that we move downward, assuming we start at a y position of 0, and the velocity in the y direction is zero, then the kinematic equation simplifies to the y distance of the electron moves downward is one half at squared. 
A is 9.8, the time is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds, and this electron is moving down 1.9 times 10 to the minus 16 meters, ignorable. So the path here is uh, just due to the magnetic force on the electron, and we've found the ratio of charge to mass for the electron. We also reviewed a little bit electric force and magnetic force balancing, give us a velocity selector. Uh, if you'd like some other uh, physics and astronomy videos, they're listed at these two websites. It's free, uh, no charge, and there's uh, a link to each YouTube video on this website. It will take you directly there after you find a video you're interested in. If you find these videos useful, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel.